every hull we build, whether or not the person wants it for uh, a different recreational function or for high-speed racing, they're built the same. We, we build out of core cell, vinyl ester, resin. If the customer specifies weight being an issue, we can go to an epoxy laminate schedule with carbons and Kevlars and different S-glass, different military spec uh, laminates. But this thing is very strong. Everything new that we're putting in, it's, uh, it's, it's meshed right in with the old so that there's no way you could have a failure. Some of the mechanical cuts too, you could see in the laminate. Here, this angle is cut, the original. We mechanically place the other stringers underneath so that mechanically it can't come loose and then chemically it can't come loose either. Everything's catalyzed by hand. We don't use spray guns at all so that there's never a mistake as to something under catalyzed or over catalyzed where it becomes very brittle. Resin has a shelf life, beer has a shelf life, <laughs> soda has a shelf life. You don't want, and if you could understand that concept, you don't want flat resin to be mixed to build a boat that's going to run over 100 miles an hour. So this structure right here, you can see there's no place where you can see where the deck and the hull were joined. It's going to be all one unit piece. You can feel the structure, whether I bang here where the deck is, here where there's the space where we raise it, here down low, it's all one piece. And that's a huge aspect of this boat. God forbid this thing were to go up on its side or corkscrew or come down off a wave wrong, there's no weak spot. A weak spot creates a hinge and a hinge becomes a pop. You, you see a deck pop loose from a hull, it's because there wasn't enough effort put to join those two together, especially adhesives. Uh, a lot of companies, they love rub rails. Rub rails on the outside, okay, if you need a rub rail because you don't want to scuff up your boat or you could use a bumper or whatever it is, that's fine. But that should be a, an accessory, something that goes on afterwards, not where you're hiding where the hull and the deck join together. That's ridiculous. If you have a weak spot there, you hit something big enough, you're going to have a pop there. The other thing, too, you can see how the core cell moves. It's got very, very much a flexible uh, composite for a reason. You don't want something too rigid when you hit the water. You want it to have some flex. Obviously, when you add fiberglass to it, this same uh, piece of core becomes a solid structure. So it's just the right ratios. You got to know what's, what's going to make the boat work where you're not adding so much weight that you have a lead sled. Uh, the other thing, too, there's no wood in Jaguar boats. My father has an old saying. He's been saying it since I can remember, wood only wish it could. So every inch of this boat is a composite. It's either a closed cell linear foam in a, in, a, in a certain density for stringers and bulkheads. Even the transoms are a higher density core. No wood at all. So this boat will last forever. There's nothing on this boat that could rot, except for possibly the accessories that you put on it. You might have to replace engines. You might have to transition the boat to something else, to a different application, but the structure is always going to be sound.